Welcome back to Hilo Zero. Today we have X-Plane 11 and story time. Last week, on a lovely Friday the 13th, I took a trip down to Mossel Bay, South Africa to do my very first helicopter intro flights at Starlight Aviation. After a short tour of the hangar and facilities, I met with my instructor and we walked out to the helicopter. At first, we had the Gimbal Cabri G2, with the doors off. We walked around the helicopter, going through the typical pre-flight checks, then hopped in and went through the startup procedures. With me following on the controls, the instructor then lifted off, positioned us over the taxiway, and moments later we were taking off towards the coast. While I didn't get any footage in the air, I attempted to recreate the flights somewhat in X-Plane 11. Shortly after takeoff, I was allowed to take control of the cyclic. After getting a feel for it, I was then given the collective, then the pedals, and I was flying. Not in the most stable fashion, but flying nonetheless. Unfortunately, the wind had picked up shortly after takeoff. This started moving through the cabin with the doors off, catching on my headset mic to the point where the instructor and I couldn't effectively communicate. So we cut the flight short and we rooted back to the airfield. Back at the airfield I was given my first taste of hovering. First, one control at a time, and then all three. Although my instructor was very calm and reassuring, I felt I really struggled to keep the cabri under control, often overcorrecting and drifting off from the mark. Quite far off from the mark. I 
I was then tasked with taxiing back to the hangar sideways. This didn't last very long and I straightened out pretty quickly. It was made even more difficult by a strong tailwind. The instructor then took over closer to the hangar, completed our taxi and landed us back. After we went through our shutdown procedures, I was given the all-important task of stopping the rotor with one blade pointing forward. It was close, ending up around the 11 o'clock position. Well done for my first time. What a rush that was. I retreated back to the hangar for a water break for part two. Now it was time for the Robinson R22, with the doors on this time. The lesson started much the same, going through the pre-flight checks and start procedures, which I got to help with this time. During our startup there was another student practicing sling loading right behind me, Another course which they offer at Starlight Aviation. After liftoff, the instructor positioned us over the taxiway once again, this time turning around to hand me the controls to do a bit more hover practice. In the video here you can pretty much see where I took over and things got slightly wobbly.
The instructor then took the controls, cleared us of the airfield, and then handed them back to me. I don't have an R22 in X-Plane, so I'm just using a freeware R44 for the demo here. I found the R22 much easier to control with its hydraulic assistance, as well as the general feel of maneuvering the aircraft. I was given a couple of speeds, attitudes and altitudes to maintain, as well as keeping a high bank angle under control. On the way back to the airfield I was given a couple of radio calls to do, one of which I got slightly wrong, calling the wrong number for the runway which the instructor then corrected shortly after. Once we were close to the airfield, the instructor took control again, performing a quick stop and turn towards the hangar. That was pretty cool. I attempted, but failed, to replicate that in the background video here. I was then handed the controls again to hover outside the hangar. Doing pretty well, I was told to move us towards our landing spot, being careful of the uh, 4 million rand cabri nearby that we flew earlier. This went mostly well, until a break in my concentration required the instructor to retake controls about here. Once we were on the ground, I was coached through the shutdown procedures. Again, I was then given the all-important task of stopping the rotor with the blade pointing directly ahead, this time failing miserably by almost 90 degrees. Whoopsie. And that was it. I now have one hour of real-world flight time behind my name. I'd like to thank Starlight Aviation staff and my instructor for this incredible experience. With a bit of planning and a bit of luck, I can continue to work towards my private pilot license. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.